Mother-in-law is a huntsman's child, yeah? Yes. Is that good? Your father taught you how to track? Yes. Be prepared to ride in one hour's time. I get us a horse and mine gear. He turns around and he goes out. He'll be back in about an hour. Rad. Rapunzel, uh, am I saying it right? How do you know my name? Oh, that's odd. I shouldn't. Well, anyway, your magic. Beautiful. Who taught you? What are you talking about? Your skill in the arcane arts matches my own. I'm no wizard. What are you? I'm me. And I like you. Who are you? Me? Yes, you. I am Phineas Theogenes Carnum. Why do you stand like that? It's ridiculous. Oh, no, that's style. No, it's not. It, 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 it is, actually. No, it's not. Mogli, give me a 20 cent. This is perception. You can too, actually. Seven. Eleven. There's a weird smell. You catch it immediately when you sniff the air. It is the smell of burnt fur and sulfur. Everybody in the entire church where you are protecting the children, they freeze and they look around. Some of the adults that have come to help are like, wolves in the city? Everybody else hears howls. You hear the fire called to us. The suffering summoned us. Man cub, I've returned with my pack as I said I would. We smell their fear. Get back, everyone get back. Sweet cubs for the slaughter. Are you coming out, man cub? Or are we coming in? <sighs> Shadows flit past the entrances to this place. Um, so I put the cloak around me so they can't see me. Even if they smell me, they can't see me. Very good. And I'm gonna stealthily sneak right outside so that I can see them and then use Hunter's sense. Wait. Okay, I wait. They're going to try to split us up. We need to stay in front of the children. I don't know how to harm them. Do you know what their weaknesses are? What do you want? We want your pack, boy. Come, man cub. We will start with you if you wish. Do you follow the laws of the jungle? We are the jungle. I have to get out there. Because there, there's no way we can beat them if I don't know how to, how to hurt them. I want to see how big the pack is. So, what I will do is I will stand and make myself as big as I can, and you will be hidden for security. I want to talk to the leader of this pack. I want to talk to their alpha. You leave the many frightened children and a handful of adults behind in the small stone temple. You enter the back courtyard where the remains of the orphanage still smolder in a blackened wreck. From the smoldering bones of the orphanage, the hellhound that threatened you appears. It slinks out, and then another, and then another, each one different, a different breed of burning hound. Ah, <sighs> man cub. And the little one smells different. And where are the sweetmeats? Give me a stealth check. 21. They do not detect you yet, even though you're standing against the stone wall directly in front of them. Right. All eyes tend to be on him, sometimes on him. I'm using my hunter's sense, so how do I damage it? Like, what, what would cause it? What are its immunities? Fire, you're not going to hurt it with fire, ever. Okay. Um, aside from that, you can hurt it in the normal fashion, but it is horribly vicious and it has fire in its belly. Uh, not unlike a dragon. 
but blows with a weapon will hurt it. Absolutely. Okay. How big is the pack? At least six. A good pack does not show its full number. Friend. They're starting to spread out. And there, there's no vulnerability, specific vulnerabilities. Yes. I am going to do something. Protect the young ones. Can you do that? Yes, I can. Maybe escape. I feel like I've been training my entire life, raised in the jungle for this moment. I want to challenge you for Alpha. And your pack will be my pack. Have to meet the challenge. That is the law of the jungle. All of the canines lower their head and they look at the alpha and they look at you and they back away in the circle that is recognized as the alpha challenge, right? And the main hellhound looks at them. Challenge accepted. And it takes a step forward. But you are beneath me, boy. I use the right to call my champion. And he yips to your ears. Rook, rook. The timbers start to creak and shift. And out of the wreckage of the orphanage, something huge and dark and burning comes through the lumber. It is Bucho. His eyes are on fire, and he has fire in his belly. The massive, burning, killing machine walks into the clearing, and even the other hounds back away from it a little bit, and it snaps at them. You can hear its jaws snap, snap. It is ready. Roll initiative. That's not fair. 19. I'm ready. And the leader backs up as the Hell Mastiff comes forward. You have the first move. Mowgli, he's not playing by the rules. You do not have to do this. Everyone stay back. If anyone intervenes, the pack will kill all the children. Mowgli. I am so upset at what they've done to my best friend that I rage. I'm gonna run at Bucho and I'm going to grab Bucho's neck and try to bring Bucho to the ground. Bring him to the ground? Mm -hmm. He's the size of a bear. I wanna try to jump up and try to bring him to the ground. Oh, okay. It's interesting. I Running is not a problem. Neither is the athletic event, but to get in that position, you're going to need a good attack. Go ahead. Okay. And are we on initiative on this? Because... He is. He warned you guys not to in intervene. You can, If you enter this combat, you can when enter. I was wondering if I can, while, while this is going on, sneak back in and grab my battle axe. You absolutely can. Okay. Thank Fifteen. You. Yes, you jump up and you grapple. Mm -hmm. Give me a string check. Okay. And I get advantage of this because I'm raging. Yes. Okay, great. Well, that's a good start to begin with. Okay, we're going to stick with that first one. It's going to be 18. You slam onto the side of him immediately. I want to try to push against, not forward, not at his face, not at his back. But if I push to the side, I should be able to knock him down. Okay. It's, it's the easiest attack move in nature. And then I want to whisper as quickly as I can without putting myself in danger. My friend, are you still there? Play? <laughs> we play? We play now? Show? Yes. It starts fighting with you. It throws its hand up. Oddly, its tail is wagging, but ignore that. <laughs> and it starts smacking you and trying to snap at you. Yeah. But, give me a performance roll. 
Oh, okay, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 17. You recognize this pattern. He bites onto your calf for just a second, which should have removed your leg, but then he shoves your calf over a little bit and gives you a little lift onto his back. And then he snaps after you, but it's the show of snapping. A little bit of fire flies out, that's new. But in any case, you thing continues to And now all the dogs are barking and yipping. Rawr, kill him, rip him apart, tear him, be the new alpha. Rawr. And they're all roaring. Back in the circus for all those four cold moons that we had, Bucho and I would wrestle. And I would tackle Bucho and Bucho would tackle me. And to everyone else, it looked so violent. But for us, it was just playing like pups. And then eventually what would happen is Bucho would bite onto my arm and then I would bite Bucho's neck because Bucho has a really big, thick neck. And sometimes I'd even make blood come out, but it was still fine because Bucho had such a big neck. And then I would growl and I would bring Bucho to the ground and Bucho would lay there still. Now it's hard because Bucho's really big right now. So instead of holding onto all of Bucho, I'm just holding onto Bucho's shoulders and Bucho's trying to snap back at me and then I'm reaching forward, trying to hold Bucho's, the top of Bucho's jaw like up as much as possible to control, okay. but Bucho bites down okay. on my hands. Okay. But they're so small now compared to Bucho that they disappear between the teeth. And then I bite at the back of Bucho's neck and pull on the head and bring Bucho to the ground. Roll that performance. <laughs> okay. You can deal with advantage because this is the performance. <sighs> okay. Come on, something bigger. We're gonna go with nine. Bucho's head. All right, you snap onto the back of his neck and he makes that and he starts to go in a circle and you see all of the dogs start to lower their head and start barking, but it's a low bark. They don't know what's happening. They're watching the entire thing. Give me one more performance and see if you can finish this well. 17. Ooh. You take a final throw back and you bury your face into the side of Bucho's neck in all of that folded flesh and and you pull back. Your mouth is covered in fur and there is a trickle of blood and Bucho snaps his head sideways and starts to fall and you bury your face in his neck and he's kicking and yelping and this big one takes a step forward. Rock. What? And huh. it starts stepping forward and all the others look at him and he backs up because that is the rule of the jungle. He has to. But you finish it and Ucho kicks and kicks her. Her. No. No. What? <laughs> that is the performance and he will lay there until the word is given for him to get back to his cage or the handlers will come out and lift him up, as per the show was. You stand up and you look down at him and you do see him go. All of the postures on all of the other hounds turns in towards the lead Hellhound, or the former Alpha. <gasps> you yeah! are Alpha of a pack of Hellhounds. Oh! oh, yes you are. And yes, you can keep them. <laughs> <laughs> what is your first command? You threatened my pack. And I'm saying this to the former Alpha. I protect my pack. Kill him. That's what an alpha should do. Attack him. What's to say that you won't continue to threaten my pack? Because now, all of you are my pack. We will not be threatened. But I agree with you. Attack. Wong. And then this is a short battle. He is horribly outnumbered. The pack does not notice that Bucho stands up behind you 
as they're tearing him apart. He shakes his neck. We play again? Soon? Soon. He nudges you with his head. Give me a strength check. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, that's going to be, oh great, 24. You stand strong as an alpha should. <laughs> what do we do next? What do we do next? A member of our pack is in danger. Find the missing member of our pack. Track her down so we can reunite the pack. Do we have uh, things? Oh, you have several dresses of Rapunzel's. <laughs> I noticed that I have a few strands of Rapunzel's hair through the combat and all of my interactions with her and I, I reach for it and I say, here, Mowgli, catch the scent. Each one comes up and sniffs. They're waiting for the alpha. The alpha tends to lead. Bucho bumps you when he does it. Boom. Mm. Is he play? Mm-hmm. Get on. Yes. Above your heads, you see a crow circling and it starts to come down. I recognize this bird. You hear Rapunzel's voice come from the crow. Oh, I thought I knew the bird. Maybe <laughs> this is something else. So Boots comes and circles around and lands uh, in front of you um, and sort of tilts tilts its head a little quizzically because there are all of these large creatures about and Boots would prefer not to be eaten. Uh, <laughs> and it opens its mouth and says, he has me, I am in some sort of small room. It's quite cramped. Uh, he has musical instruments and he is taking me somewhere and I don't know where. There are fields outside. Well, if we send the hellhounds to chase her down, we can follow her by horseback. Brother Grimm is coming back on horseback at any time now. So let's follow them. I'm going to leave my pack there. Very good. But make sure they don't enter and, and possibly cause Rapunzel to be harmed. Have them wait until we arrive. Together, yes. all of us, they together. Know she is part of the pack. I, I can help. I will tell you. Yes. I will guide you be as careful, I go. Be careful, Rapunzel. I will do my best. I jump onto the back of Bucho. Ah, I knew they were horses. <laughs> <laughs> and Boots looks triumphant. Very nice. Boots flies over to Red and lands on your shoulder and whispers in your ear, please don't forget the tiny prince. Oh, the frog. Okay. Rapunzel, you sit in a comfortable, oddly spacious, decidedly decadent carriage that rolls gently as it makes its way east. Carnum, who's sitting across from you, stares absentmindedly outside the carriage. What are those strange stones? Those aren't stones, my dear. Those are the dead. Those are skeletons. Skeleton, the, 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 the inside of people that are outside. Precisely. You are clever. What must it be like to have all that power? You know, Merkel, the Lord of Bones himself, is out there somewhere. What, what, what kingdom is Bones? The kingdom of the dead. They are calling to him, worshiping him. I would not like to go to this kingdom. None of us would. And that is the point. You know, I might just become a lord myself. Phineas Theogenes Carnum, Lord of Style. Eh, nah, Lord of Passion. No. Lord of Pain. I would not want to rule pain. That would not be enjoyable. Wouldn't it? No. Watercress, you ride, and after a time, you pass something in the darkness. A tree, a fence post? Uh, give me perception checks. Uh, 
Uh, 20. 18. 24. You guys see it, but not before pack. It smacks you in the face, and you reflexively pull up a hand and swat it down, and you continue to ride, holding on tight, and you realize that in your hand is a skeletal arm with the hand just, whoop, you flick it off. You are definitely passing through the fields of the dead. You are quickly becoming aware of the long dead, standing, screaming silently in the dark. Lots of skeletons, only a few at first, but you notice that some are armored. Others, less so, but they all seem to be facing north. You veer around some of the largest groups of them, circumventing the army of the dead, but most of them seem to be doing this. If you're going this way, they're going all of the skeletons, and that's why you ran right through one of their arms. They're all reaching for something that way. Brother Grimm rides behind you. This is Merkel's doing, the Lord of Bones. This does not concern us. Go, go. So we listen to Brother Grimm and just keep going. You quickly outdistance the old knight, but you know that you cannot slow down. He just waves you forward. Rapunzel, he's looking at you now. You've been quite the naughty girl. Leaving your tower, running around, having adventures. I left my tower for safety. And is that why you burned my circus tents? I did not burn your tents. Mm. You are the one who attacked us. Take responsibility. I believe my animals were free. Whose responsibility was that? They had not spent their entire lives in those cages. They knew what else was in the world. So? That was cruelty. That was life, girl. To you a- spent time in a cage, no? I did not know. And neither did they. And they were happy. They were fed and taken care of, much like you. They did. They had been elsewhere. And now you have two. They had seen it before. They knew what they lost. Some, some were born into it. No matter, your grandma, Godin, she's been sick with worry. You know where she is? Where is she? Seems she's been keeping secrets because you are precious. Where is she? I wonder. I'll bet she's been keeping secrets from you as well. Do you, precious child, have any idea of who you even are? I am Rapunzel. So, no. What do you mean? Simply precious. The carriage starts to slow down. What do you mean? And he opens the door and pops out. No, tell me. I follow him. You feel the hell beasts starting to slow down. They start to sniff and look around and up, and then they start to yip in a low, guttural manner. (laughs) Roll perception. That was loud. It's going to be 19. 23. 23. 17. You sense where they're headed, and then all of their heads start to point in one direction, and they start to spread out in that direction. The hounds drop their heads and they get low to the ground. They enter a hunting mode. We recognize this, and we instinctively follow suit, so we get low to the ground, and we start stealthily crawling with them. We stay with the pack. After a time of staying low, they all stop in a row, and you guys follow suit and form the pack line. In the distance, you see campfires and torches, many of them. Boots is going to become invisible. Oh. And. That's really cool. Prepare to uh, continue approaching, but I will keep an eye on where they are so I will know as they approach closer. Very good. The entirety of what is left of the circus is up ahead. How large is the member of our family that is a mutt? It's a medium-sized dog. He's not big. I would like to use beast sense. 
You're in his head. Where do you want him to go? Down and circle the party below. Doop, 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 doop. The pack wants to follow just out of sheer instinct. Wait. And he glides through the night. In not a long time, he is there. They're making camp. There is Carnum's area, and it's very nice. And he actually has a couple of people serving him on a very nice tray outside. Him and Rapunzel is sitting with him. And she's sitting sort of side saddle on a nice little seat right near the fire. He's talking about some thing and she's asking questions. Uh, and she occasionally looks up and she blinks and then she continues talking. And he's just talking, talking, talking. And then there's another larger camp off to the side. Uh, they're just out of earshot, uh, but you can see it. And you go over there and there is the strong man walking around and he's laughing and he's talking about something. And there are the jugglers and they're throwing at the side of one of the wooden wagons. There, there's, and there's a lot of the tent people, but they have no tent, so they have nothing to do. There's a lot of people over there. And then I return back to my senses. Okay, so now it's time we need to figure out a plan. Yes. What's our, what, what's our plan to go in and get Rapunzel now? So there are two parties. There's one camp here with the people who are probably better fighters. And there's one camp here with the bad person and Rapunzel and a few servants. I will disguise myself as someone serving the tea or, or someone in the camp. And is the plan to distract them so that we can sneak in and start? Yes, and at, at most, if necessary, sneak attack him. But at least because... I'll be there to get Rapunzel out of danger. Okay, how long will this take, Aladdin? I will now approach the camp. And in the meantime, can we ready for attack? Because I'm ready to go in. Once it's once I will signal for an attack by I'll send a message. Perfect. Um, I now arrive um, and approach uh, the location that Mowgli described. You do see a somewhat nondescript server. He has a bowl haircut, and he's wearing a green shirt, a very simple tabardy type shirt and leather pants. I will begin by casting Disguise Self, matching the description of the man in the green tabard. And uh, I will grab a, a flagon of wine, uh, and I will begin to um, move from table to table, hoping to eventually arrive at, at Rapunzel. This begins, where are you guys? I'm, we're, we're as close as we can get without being noticed before the light starts. And, uh, and we're ready to attack. We're in a battle attack mode. I've got the battle ax, my grandfather's ax. And uh, you? We, we've got the whole pack around us, I believe. Very nice. The pack, as you guys move forward, stops. And they're growling to each other in a low manner amongst themselves. Well, and I'll tell you, Mowgli, I'm having a lot of trouble not just going in and trying to take these people out. I never told you before, but my name is Red for a reason. My father used to call me Little Red because I have a bit of a temper. And I'm feeling it right now. I don't like the fire on the outside, but I like your fire on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> what are they saying? We want humans, human flesh. You look at their burning eyes, and as they speak, sparks come out of their mouth from deep in their throat. They all turn their heads to the camp on the right, not him, not her, just the humans. And they turn to look at the camp on the left and, and they all start to growl. Soon, soon my pack. <laughs> we'll wait for the best time. What do you guys want to do? Have I learned any more information? He 
never comes back to the subject of your grandmother if that's what you're asking. He blatantly ignores it or he goes off on his own tangent and he's good at distracting your mind with conversation. It's extraordinarily charming and entertaining. You've never met a more entertaining person. You've met seven people, but that said, you've never met a more entertaining person ever. Hmm. He tells you stories. He even does a little dance. He sings a little bit. Where did you learn these things? Oh, years on the road. It's a gift, really. You stand on the road and the knowledge comes to you? No, you walk the road and you gather them like little treasures, little memories that enrich your life. You have already started. I bet you have changed quite a bit since leaving the tower, no? I, I suppose I have seen different things and people are different than I expected. And there is so much space. Oh, yes. I guess I never thought about that. And what is it with the books? He sees it stuck in your pocket. They are stories. Stories they are, are meant to be lived and told. He starts standing up and he starts telling you like the one and he starts to go down the road of another story. And it's a good story. You've not heard that one. And I file it away. And he's very excited about all of it. He's very vivacious and he loves all of that. But that was not an answer to my question. <laughs> and you are right. And he sits down, more tea, and he starts to pour. I notice that there is no wine on between them and I will approach the table and offer as Boots sees this happening, Boots will also approach and help if anything were to happen. Staying out of sight. Yes, okay. invisible. You walk into a pretty empty camp. It's just you moving forward. Excuse me, sir, would you like some wine? <sighs> Put it over there. And he continues to talk, he ignores you. And this is very normal for a caliph, for instance, or a sultan. He has the same style and he just waves you off without looking at you twice. I, man I maneuver close enough behind him after he waves me off. I, I pretend that I'm going to move to set the wine where he pointed to, but I pivot at the last minute and get behind him. And I will now send a message to my friends. One word. Attack. We start charging. I've got the battle axe and a hand axe. As you wish. <laughs> but when I have that battle axe in my hand, I feel so invincible. Yes. And I see nothing but red. Yes. You are named well. <laughs> You see the smallest smile on his face. And he stands up and he's standing just over you because he's tall. And he looks at you. My friend, join us, please. He gives you his seat. Please. I, I'm just offering No, wine, so. no, oh, have a no. seat, my friend. You see, it is a rule of mine that no one walks directly behind me, so someone who doesn't know that rule obviously isn't one of us. But please, enjoy some tea. And he continues to talk. He does not see what's coming from the dark, though. <laughs> he thinks he's quite clever. Mowgli, you're flying in. I am on the back of Bucho. Okay. And I Oh, you're riding in on Bucho? Mm-hmm. Okay. And I just give one bark which is just the ca other camp. Oh. And then I want, and I'm telling all the other hellhounds to race off towards that camp. Ah, I see. Oh, they're very happy with this. Oh. Anything for the pack. And now I'm racing towards Carnum. I am furious 
that a member of my pack was removed and endangered, and I hate Karnum. Hmm. I want to knock him down, not across, but I want to knock him down with Bucho. Oh. And as I'm doing this, we are back on the hunt. This is a prey who doesn't even know we're coming yet. With his back to me, I am raging. You charge in on the back of Bucho, the mastiff from hell. It suddenly punches its feet down and stops right at the edge of camp. It does not go any further. Roll a uh, athletics check. That's going to be a 10. You barely hold on, but you slip off to the side, and he backs off. It's like he can't look in that direction. He turns his face away. This is not natural. This is not normal. But you don't really have time to question it. I want to charge forward. May I have your initiative rolls, please? Go ahead. 16. 10. Okay, 13. Nine. Very good. And Boots is, oh, Boots is 21. And in this moment, what would you like Boots to do? Uh, Boots is flying down to provide the help action. Very good. Mowgli, you charge into camp. I am going to shift. As I'm running, this is still the hunt, even though I've like, I've launched off of my friend. This is the most familiar feeling and I'm running and my fingernails start to grow a little bit and my face starts to form. And the biggest change is that two teeth in my mouth, my canine fangs, grow out of my mouth. Ooh. As I leap onto him and sink those teeth into his shoulder. Oh. Attack. You have an advantage on this. Great. That's going to be a 16. That will do. All right. And while he's forming the words, what? You jump at him with ferociousness and you're on him. What happens? All right, I'm gonna roll my D6, add my strength modifier. And, uh, and then also because I'm raging, I get another plus two. So that's 10. Um, I use my speed just to kick off the ground right at him and jump and land on top of him, even with his arms out. Good, a pl these are like branches for me. And I hold both of his arms and sink my teeth right into his neck, right there. <laughs> he throws his head back as your fangs, your newly formed fangs sink into the side of his shoulder. Well done. And because of my wolf totem spirit, all of you have advantage on melee attacks against him right now. Awesome! <laughs> and I should be right behind him, right? You are directly behind him. You see him jump on him immediately. Um, so I've got my battle axe. I want to quickly cast Slayer's Prey as a bonus action. So that's going to add more damage. And then I want to take his legs out at the knees. Go ahead and roll your attack. 14. You clip him damage. Six. Another six from Slayer's Prey. Very good. And then there's a two for the battle axe. 12, 14 points of damage. Yeah. yeah. It slams into the back of his leg and he absolutely roars in pain. And when he looks down at you, his eyes are bright red and his hand is on fire. He grabs your face. Roll a dexterity saving throw. Five. He clasps your face and fire explodes all in and around your head. And you see the flames light up his veins and disappear under his sleeve. But you see them reappear up his neck and through his face as the hellish rebuke pours through his body. This is 24 points of damage. You burn on the ground and he looks like he wants to reach for you but he's looking around and there's, she's swinging on the ground and although she's backing off a little bit because her face is literally on fire and you are 
on him for a second and he swings you off of him just for a second because he didn't have him grappled yet. He just creates a little space for himself and he does something with his hand and as he does it, he pulls and twists and he creates a symbol in the air that looks like this fire trailing his fingers and that symbol stays there and he pulls it open and there's a hole in space and he steps through it. He's not here anymore. And the flames go, and they explode right there at the campfire. They get really hot and bright. Doesn't cause any damage, but it's just very, very unnatural. You hear screams coming from your left immediately. Lots of screams. And you also hear dogs doing what dogs do when they're in an attack pack. There is pure chaos over there. People are running in every direction, screaming in every direction, and you see fires breaking out everywhere at the same time. And what are you doing? I need to see to my friends. Um, Red is hurt. I need to, uh, I, 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 can I get to Red? Uh, you can, but she's growling and swinging the axes. She doesn't look safe to ne- get near at this exact moment. Rapunzel. All right. This is not fun anymore. And I am going to cast a fireball right into the center of that second camp. A fireball? I see hounds of fire attacking, and I see people who have been complicit in this this work with this man who captured me and was cruel, and I do not stand for that. I don't stand for much yet, but I know I do not stand for this. I look there, and I have had the ends of my hair singed before. I know what that feels like. And I take my hair and I twist the ends, knowing that singe, and I pull that sensation, and the heat, and the burning, and I make it grow. And I make it grow. And I make it grow until it's bigger than the tower. I know space now, and I will hurl that at them. I cast a fireball. (laughs) Hell of a fireball. A fireball hits the center of their camp. They must make a dexterity 13 save. Sometimes there are losses we have learned. Please begin to figure your damage for me. First roll, four. Second roll, four. Third roll, four. Fourth roll, one. Fifth roll, five. Sixth roll, five. Seventh roll, two. Eighth roll, five. 30 damage. Anything that saves takes half. The other camp explodes in light and flame. Bodies go flinging like rag dolls through the night. Outlined in the silhouette, you can distinctly see hounds running through the flames, unperturbed by the utter destruction that the flames bring. But the people, they run and scream if they survived it all. Their cruelty was horrible. You stand there looking at this massive destruction flames everywhere, the wagons are on fire. Mowgli, what do you want to do? All this flame, all this destruction just reminds me of the life that was taken from me when I was captured from the jungle. All my thoughts are on that creature and finding him. All the 20 sided. Perception. 22. You go look for him like a wolf would. Mm -hmm. No one else can see in the dark, so you go to the edge of the camp and you start to look for yourself. Perhaps you will find something. You want to kill. Roll a 20-sided wisdom save. So that's a 16 in Very good. There was a reason that perhaps your parents both said never touch that battle axe. But you can't remember or think about why that might have been. You can just look at the battle axe and appreciate its curves. And then you start to see something. Perception check. Oh, so that's 20. Backlit by the fires on that side, you see past the battle axe, 
her because she's standing between you and the other camp, and then past her, something very big. Well, I guess I have to go with it. Um, if she's in danger and it's coming at her, then I'm going to run as quickly as I can toward it with the battle axe. So yeah, I'm gonna go for it. You charge forward. You run at it, and it is running at you. Give me a strength saving throw. 17. You're good, you, you saved. Uh, this is that hippo-headed, huge man, Lieutenant Commander Gefalion, and he is charging hard, and he, puts his head down and he lifts it. He means the head butt you and completely run you over. But you manage to take a step to the side and he barely passes you, but he starts to turn around, but his great mass carries him a little bit further. You have his full attention. You can attack if you want to. Yeah, I, I try to sink that right into his center. Do it. Okay. 17. You hit him. So that's a three. Three points of damage? Yeah. You swing hard and he, as he turns, he turns his body sideways and he puts his long sword flat against his chest. Ping! And that's where you hit him. You cause a little bit of damage, but you've never seen anybody do a maneuver like that. So uh, I'm gonna go with the left hand with my hand axe. Very good, do it. So 18. Yes, that'll do. Damage. Five. You swing low, and this is with the hand axe, is that correct? Yeah. You swing low with the hand axe, and he takes a step back, a solid step, and he drops the longsword in a low guard position, and he catches the head of the hand axe and goes, conk, and he stops it, and he looks at you. <laughs> Naval Academy. <laughs> and he swings at you and makes you back off. He's using weird maneuvers that you didn't know existed. This is nothing that your father ever talked about. After he swings it, it is his attack, and he comes after you. He cuts you across the chest, eight points of damage, and it hurts. And he snaps his head back to look to see if there's anyone else coming, and he levels his sword at you. I don't have much left. Wisdom save. 17. I would like to rush to, to her and, and yell out to this creature and, and, and implore to him, being a martial warrior and myself being a prince who led armies, please, you fight for, for an evil man who, who knows nothing of, of, of honor or war. You do not need to do this. We have fought hard, my friends and I, for survival. I am a stranger to this realm and I just want to return home. We mean no harm to you. Please, you've already injured my friend. Allow us to retreat. Allow us to get out of here and we will not attack you further. He holds the sword level at you. Go ahead and roll a persuasion check. You have one chance to catch his ear. 16. He stops moving, but he does not lower his guard. Lieutenant, please. His huge body heaves. I did a complete tour as a Marine, full metals. And then I was a commander of the Navy. This is not an honorable fight fighting children. Thank you. Thank you. I will leave this place. Perhaps I will return to the land of the gift. Yes, yes indeed. Hell of a swing, girl. Hell of a swing. And he starts limping back to the burnt camp he puts his big meat hook on you, it just plops you to the ground because you are exhausted. But then and you hear coming from the darkness. It is Brother Grimm. He explodes into the campfire where you guys are, and he runs right through the camp. He does not say hello. He goes to the other side. You have I rush over to her to help. 
You have two levels of exhaustion. With your help, she can do it. You get under her arm and you guys start to make your move over there. Mowgli, you've gotten out here to the dark. You absolutely caught his scent. You also hear in the distance. Karnum is on a rock because you smell his blood scent. She opened up the back of his leg and he's on a rock and he turns around and he sees you out here. And he backs up a little bit. Wild beast, what do you want? And his fingers start to burn. But you are not alone. Brother Grimm rides up, finally catching up. And he looks at you and he nods. What do you want to do? What is the surrounding that we're looking at? Behind him, there's not a lot. It seems that there's some air rushing up. You think he's at the edge of a cliff. He's kind of on a rock. This is where he jumped to. You tracked him to this place. And there's not a lot of space to go. That's what's out here. This land ends here. He looks at Brother Grimm and he says, Grimm? So nice to see you up and about. And that armor, so ornate. Brother Grimm is still on his horse and he slowly gets down. He looks pissed. You murdered my brother, demon. Do not think this will go unpunished. And he gets off of his horse. Carnum backs up a little bit. He respects this guy for whatever reason, and he's got his eye on you too. He looks at Grim, he looks at you, and he backs up just a little bit. A holy warrior, so very rare. Where was your faith when you were a vegetable? And you see Grim take a step forward. You feel the pack wanting to move in. Do you do the same? Let me get this straight. Carnum, who I hate, is standing on a ledge. Yeah. So, the thing about me is I was actually the slowest of my pack when I was growing up with the wolves because I'd always run them four. But then I realized I could be the fastest if I ran on two. Oh. Because the way I would do that was I was able to leap from tree branch to tree branch, from crag to crag. I'm going to run at him, and I'm going to kick him off the cliff. Yes! Give me an athletic check. That's going to be an 11. That is solid. That is fine. It represents a good, solid jump. You have no problem with that. This is the attack. Attack him with your... Come on, get away, Mowgli. 17. Give me an opposed strength check. 19. Four. As you run forward, you guys, you saw Brother Grimm blow past the fire, the campfire, and you follow his lead. He's on horseback, he got there first, but you guys are not far behind. You see Mowgli run at Phineas Theogenes Carnum, jump into the air and kick him in the chest. Carnum looks horrified, and then the kick happens, and then he falls back, smiling. What was his jacket splits and becomes huge bat wings, and his face oh. contorts and horns pull oh, out no. of his head. <laughs> and he has a huge grin on his face. He's watching you as he just flaps. Beautiful golden girl. You know, and he starts to slow the flapping. Grandma Golden is down here. They're all down here. And he raises his hands, spreads them, and he flaps so he's almost at this angle. And then he stops flapping. Good. We'll get them, too. <sighs> he got away. He got away. 
You're exhausted. <laughs> but I'm pretty proud of my friends. But you're alive. And I'm alive. The pre-dawn sun is starting to light the sky. You're all looking over the edge. You're not sure what's down there quite yet because that's quite dark. But you know that whatever it is, you're gonna have to go and check it out soon. Brother Grimm turns around and he pauses for a second. And he walks over to a whole bunch of broken wood on the ground. Mein Gott. What is this place? I don't know. Either it's where we'll find Carnum or answers to the questions we all have. Our families may be down there. I think it's our job, like Father Grimm's dream, to protect everyone. Our family is right here. Let's go get the rest of them. Together. 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 Together.